on Good Morning El Paso. I don't care about Megyn Kelly, but no, I would not apologize. She should probably apologize to me, but I call her women. Donald Trump taking aim once again at Fox News anchor Megyn Kelly, and now he's facing new battles this morning with another influential journalist. Also, changes are coming to the ordinances in vacant buildings downtown. We'll have the details in a live report. Plus, more than 30,000 borderline students use the bus to get to school every day. So how often do those buses stay maintained for the safety of your child? We'll take an inside look. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso. A very good morning to El Paso, Las Cruces, and Juarez. I'm Stephanie Valle. And I'm Hillary Florin. Good morning, everyone. The time right now, 6.01. Time to check in with Crystal. Yes, and our forecast also important, Crystal, as people are getting ready for work and school this morning. And it looks really good outside. Today, as you head out the door, you should be fine. We're in the mid-70s right now on our current temperature. This is over at the El Paso International Airport. 75 is accompanied by calm winds and a relative humidity at 44%. I don't expect that number to rise. Instead, it's looking like more so of a dry afternoon for us with just a 10% chance of rain later on today. In Las Cruces, we're at 72 degrees, clear conditions outside right now, and our relative humidity is a bit higher. In fact, yesterday evening, we did see a few more spotty showers move through Las Cruces than El Paso, which is what we were expecting. On your clouds and radar map, no rain for us to track this morning in our viewing zone. A little action to the north of us, otherwise just some clouds outside. And coming up in a few minutes, we're going to talk about that possibility of isolated storms with mid-90s continuing in the forecast. Plus, how about rain chances increasing in the days to come? Your seven-day raincast is a few minutes away. All right, Crystal, thank you. New this morning, El Paso fire officials were called out to a scot at the park overnight for a water rescue. According to the fire department, a car ended up in the lake at the park with two people inside. Divers were called out to assist in the rescue of the driver and passenger. Both of them were taken to local hospitals with non-life-threatening injuries. Donald Trump does not shy away from confrontation. His latest with a Univision, Univision journalist in Iowa. Excuse me, sit down. You weren't called. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Go ahead. No, you don't. You haven't been called. Go back to Univision. Security guards then forced Univision and Fusion anchor Jorge Ramos to leave. He was later allowed back in, asking Trump about his stern plans for immigration reform. Screaming. We'll hear what I Ramos would, asked Trump, as well as Trump's response, a little bit later, right here on Good Morning El Paso. The El Paso Fire Department is proposing changes to City Council that will help ensure vacant buildings in the downtown area don't cause safety issues in the future. Good Morning El Paso, Denise Olivas is live right now with more details on this story. Denise? Good morning, Hillary. El Paso Fire Chief Sam Benya went before council and wants to change the current vacant buildings ordinance. Right now, the ordinance relies on buildings owners letting the fire department in for inspections, but there isn't always cooperation. Currently, there is also a registration requirement of vacant buildings, but Benya says that there has been little response from building owners themselves. And Chief Benya is proposing that all building owners now must get a permit, not just the registration, for their building. He says the goal here is safety, and part of the department's focus are all the empty buildings in the downtown area that are potential fire hazards. We're going to, now going to have our fire inspectors and our building inspectors go out there on a routine basis, once a year at least, and, and ensure that these premises are um, you know, uh, being secured and maintained uh, appropriately. That proposal will go before City Council for a vote next week. And in our next half hour, we'll talk about just how much support the fire department is getting for these new proposed changes. Stephanie, back to you. Okay, Denise, thank you. Maybe your child is one of the more than 30,000 Borderland students who uses the bus to get to school. As part of Good Morning El Paso's Back to School series, we asked ABC 7's Astro Rodriguez to check out just how safe those buses are. Three million miles. That's how far 15,000 EPISD students travel a year. Early morning and mid-afternoon, the county is buzzing with bus activity. The three largest school districts, Socorro, Isleta, and EPISD, support more than 30,000 students on the bus. But all the county's districts will tell you... A school bus is the safest vehicle on the road. EPISD has some of the oldest buses in the county. 
one third of over 300 are 22 years old. That's pretty old. But every bus remains safe by being on a preventative maintenance schedule. The district even has a computer software program that monitors the maintenance of every single bus. Every school district has its own maintenance team. At EPISD, 35 mechanics inspect each bus every 45 days and every 10,000 miles. Tires are checked on once a month. We're very confident and proud of the bus that we have. Inside the bus, drivers are certified and annually trained. Plus, the majority of buses come with cameras for any incident that may need to be reviewed. In the future, EPISD is working on getting 100% of buses equipped with a live feed that will be monitored in real time. Our auto shop does an excellent job of maintaining our buses. So the parents can rest assured that when their kids are on our buses, they're, they're safe. Ashley Rodriguez, ABC7. And we have some more back to school pictures to show this morning because you sent us so many over the last few days. Take a look at this. These are all sent in and you can always send them to us still if you haven't done so. You can use the hashtag GMAP or hashtag BTS for back to school. So many people looking excited, maybe not so excited to get back to school. <laughs> And moving on now, Washington Monthly Magazine released its annual rankings for the nation's top universities. And UTEP is again listed high among the 258 colleges and universities. Washington Monthly has UTEP number 10 overall. The magazine rates schools based on social mobility, research, and service, which requires schools to encourage students to give something back to their country. Most impressively, the university remained first for the four, fourth year in a row in the category of social mobility, that is the recruitment and graduation of low-income students. 20 years in prison, that is the punishment handed down to Brian Gametto, the drunk driver who killed a nursing student. Last week, a jury found Gametto guilty of intoxicated manslaughter for the death of 22-year-old Crystal Saldana. Gometto was speeding in his PT Cruiser when he clipped Saldana's Mazda, causing it to spin into oncoming traffic. A pickup heading in the opposite direction crashed into Saldana's car. And while one drunk driving trial wraps up, another is on schedule to begin on Friday. 24-year-old Joel Garcia is facing three counts of intoxicated manslaughter for allegedly driving drunk and killing three people this past Christmas Eve. Police say Garcia was driving drunk when he ran a red light and crashed into a vehicle. Brothers Joshua and Isaiah Deal and Joshua's girlfriend, Shannon Del Rio, died. Garcia has pleaded not guilty. Three people are now behind bars accused of taking part in a drive-by shooting Monday night. It happened around 11 o'clock on the 5300 block of La Taste. Authorities say the shooting was gang-related. Gang unit officers conducted two raids on Tuesday and arrested 22-year-old Michael Murphy. He's charged with two counts of engaging in organized criminal activity and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. 20-year-old Samuel Lewis was charged with aggravated assault on a peace officer and resisting arrest. The third suspect, 19-year-old Victor Mata, turned himself in yesterday afternoon and he's also charged with engaging in organized criminal activity and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. It's 608. Here's a live look at traffic right now. This is I-10 and McRae. Traffic is moving fine. Earlier, it looks like people are still entering the freeway right there at McRae. You're having to get off if you're hitting eastbound at Hawkins and then get right back on at McRae. And also more to come here on Good Morning El Paso. D dangerous stunts and they're all caught on camera. Commuters trying to avoid accidents and the daredevils speaking out in their defense. Also, a storm causes the closure of a post office in Cañateo. We'll let you know where you can get your mail while they damage that, while they repair that damage. And in our storm weather forecast, meteorologist Crystal Clyde that is standing by. Crystal. And we are looking at a great start to your Wednesday, but by this afternoon, will we see those thunderstorms start to pop? We're going to talk rain chances on your day planner coming up after the break. Thanks, Crystal. This is ABC7, where news comes first.